today. All new. Arrows across eels. Becoming Tina Turner. A true story of a 12-year-old girl outcast by necessity. A story of coming of age and coming out. Get inspired with the spiritual journey of one of the biggest fans of the legendary queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner. More than 60 years in the music business, Tina Turner has become one of the most commercially successful international female rock stars to date. Her sultry, powerful voice, her incredible legs, her time-tested beauty, and her unforgettable story all contribute to her legendary status. The fans all over the world have been touched and inspired by her incredible life story of courage, triumph, and survival. One of them is Canadian-born Catherine Carlson, who found redemption, strength, and possibility before she even started a fascinating friendship with Tina Turner's actual mother, Zelma Bullock. Catherine wrote a book to tell the story of her psychological relationship with her idol, Arrows Across Eons, Becoming Tina Turner. Catherine Carlson graduated from the University of Victoria in 1997 attaining a Bachelor of Arts degree with distinction. She moved to Los Angeles to study theater and quickly landed a couple of small roles on television. She then joined the Screen Actors Guild in 2000. In 2006, she associate produced and co-starred in Orgies and the Meaning of Life, a quirky independent film about one man's sincere but eccentric search for God. Finding her own self and inspiration to the biggest influence in her life, she wrote a book about her own life experience. In 2011, she created her own imprint, Shadow Valley Press, and released its first book, Arrows Across Eons, Becoming Tina Turner. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Lisa. Uh, finally, we met. Finally. <laughs> It's oh a my pleasure. Oh, <laughs> I feel so good. Arrows across Ian's becoming Tina Turner. This is an amazing book, Catherine. Thank you. This is a, a book about uh, your true story of your sincere long time admiration to Tina Turner. Yeah, it's. Um it's quite a tale, actually. As a child, I was, uh, she was, seeing Tina Turner was like really seeing a revolution or she was a revelation. And uh, so I sort of, I took refuge in what she represented because, you know, growing up, a lot of stuff is foisted on us that we're not really, you know, childhood is magical. Mm -hmm. And then we have to grow up and become these sort of bland, you know, socially acceptable working consumers. And I didn't really want to go down that path. Um, so Tina Turner became my refuge from all of that. And then years and years later, this little Canadian kid, me, moves to Los Angeles and, um, through circumstance, I, I meet her mother, and, um, and that was such a bizarre occurrence that I had to sort of step back and say, wow, the universe is dynamic, it is magical, and synchronicity is, is a part of it all. You met Tina Turner's mother, Zelma. Yes. How, how did you meet her? Well. A lot of that is covered in the book, but suffice it to say, I met Zelma Bullock through Ike Turner. So, and you know, Ike Turner to me was symbolic of a lot of um, pain and, and fear, and I, I wasn't a big Ike Turner fan, certainly the way that he's been portrayed in the media. But as, as you'll see in the book, everything happens for a reason. 
Everyone that comes into our life has a part to play. Certainly Ike Turner had a part to play in Tina Turner's life, in the development of, of not only her profound talent, but her profound resiliency as well. A lot of people know the Tina Turner story, and she's a symbol of strength and endurance, but it was precisely the people in her life and the circumstances that she endured that, that brought her to that place of strength. So, yeah, it's, it is fascinating, Louisa. Why did you write this book? I wrote the book as a tribute, not just to Tina Turner, but a tribute to existence itself. Uh, I talked to so many people who take their life for granted, in a sense, and for me, I'm, I just, I'm on my knees with gratitude for life. In the book, you talk about gratitude a lot, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I think you hit on the main theme. You know, you start out thinking you're going to write a tale about Tina Turner, and yeah. it, it, it ends it, it up being... Is. Yeah, what, what, what are you grateful for? Oh. oh, that's a great question. Well, I'm grateful for, for all of it. I'm grateful for my existence, um, for my health, for my opportunities, uh, but I'm also grateful for the obstacles because it's the obstacles, it's the pain, it's the challenges, all these things that people try to get away from, it's actually those things that create depth. I'm grateful for all of the experiences that I've had, and I never sit around going, gee whiz, life sucks. <laughs> and if, <laughs> because it's, I, I guess sometimes people look at me like, oh my God, Catherine, but I'm, there's an exuberance there. You know, there's a passion, and you know this. You're a performer. Well, yeah. You know? Both you and I <laughs> share the same common denominator. <laughs> Tina, Turner. Tina Turner! Why are you attracted to Tina Turner's spiritual journey? Um, what's he? That was on page 147. <laughs> because I'd been such a big Tina Turner fan as a child, and because she had symbolized in so many ways, because of that, the fact that you, so many years later, I was there with the family, that's when I stepped back and I looked at the universe and I said, it all happens for a reason. And the more you're aware of synchronicity, the more it shows up in your life. And I was attracted to Tina's spiritual journey for the same reason I'm attracted to my own spiritual journey. It's, it's, we evolve. God evolves as we evolve. It's all perception. Mm -hmm. it's, it's our profound perception that creates our reality. Absolutely. I don't want to be biased, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're big so fans. Biased. We're so biased. Okay, let's be biased. <laughs> but uh, who has the life that is exactly like hers? And she put in the effort. She put in, she never gave up. So many people, they'll give you any excuse they can mm -hmm. to give up on themselves, to give up on their dreams. They'll argue relentlessly for their own limitations, and then they'll have to live that life. She did the opposite. She never but, gave up. I know, but I think it's because she accepted it. Absolutely. The first, the mm -hmm. first way to change a life condition is to just accept where you're at, exactly. not resist it, mm -hmm. but to accept it. I think this book is about letting go acceptance and acceptance absolutely have you accepted yourself i think i've accepted myself i'm at a place now where i don't really put labels on myself because i see myself as an individual as embodying everything i feel you know i feel like a man woman black white gay straight mm -hmm. i feel like i span the gamut of the human experience in a way we all do and that's why I write or act. It's because it's all there. All of these experiences want to come out, you know? In your book, you talk about your own sexuality. Yeah. It's a, the gay theme was a, was a major theme. The, the need for, for us as individuals to be authentic in the moment. Because let's face it, we can change. Things change. 
we're not all static. It doesn't like I'm gay and that's it, or I'm mm -hmm. this and that's that forever. It's about the ability, because then you get boxed into that corner exactly. and no one lets you out. Exactly. So for me, it's about being authentic to wherever you're at in this moment and knowing that sometimes that moment can change and to be free to change as long as you're being authentically true to yourself. It's interesting. You know what? During one of your encounters with Tina's mother, uh -huh. Zelma, and finally made a revelation on how much yeah. Tina Turner, her daughter, meant to you. Was it a big, big relief after you said it to her? We'll be back with Katherine Carlson after this. The way that Tina Turner's mother has been portrayed, certainly in, in Hollywood, I guess, is mm -hmm. that she was the woman that abandoned Tina. She was the woman who, who didn't really realize the greatness of her daughter. She was the woman who felt that it was mostly Ike. And so I was coming in with that idea of her. But such a gracious and sweet woman. Mm -hmm. I just felt like, OK, universe, you've put me here with Zelma, this person that you know was the biggest Tina Turner fan. Mm -hmm. And somehow it's all going to come full circle. Because more than even me wanting to sort of relay how much Tina meant to me, I was so curious about what Tina meant to her. You know, that's what I was curious about. And that was sort of my way in. And, um, and so that circle sort of completed itself. Because I discovered that Zelma absolutely loved and appreciated her daughter in her own way. Did way. you have doubts? I only, I only had doubts insofar as an outsider would, mm -hmm. looking in on something that you don't really know. But just because, because I'm sitting there with this woman um, at her bedside, you think, okay, universe, you put <laughs> me here. Here I am. There must be a reason for it. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for everything. It's this. <laughs> that, and that's the reason for it. Both Tina's mother, Zelma, and ex-husband, uh, Ike Turner, passed away. Mm -hmm. As so, did Aileen. She oh, yeah, recently, Aileen, too. Yeah, she, yeah, Aileen, too. How did their passing affect you and influence you into finishing your book? Well, Zelma passed away in 1998. So she... She passed away sort of when I was still in the middle of it all. And then Ike died many years later, many, many years later. Uh, I think he was 76. And, and so in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, I have to get this book done. Yeah. You know, it's, it's. So, so you started your book before they passed away. I started, on. I actually started writing the book in 2008, hmm. actually writing the book. So 10 years after Zelma had died, and, and I'm not exactly sure. I think, did Ike die in 2007? Something 2007, like that? 2007, yeah. About yeah. maybe four, four years ago. Yeah, so I started this in 2008. And then Aileen died in 2010. So yeah. like a year ago. Yeah, a year ago. So, but I always had it in the back of my mind that I would write this story because it was, it was a nudge from the universe. Like, yes. okay, come on. Yeah. You have to, this is what you have to share with humanity. Yeah. You know, and so it's fascinating though that they have all passed and it's a reminder that life, you know, it, we're, it's not about sitting around because time is moving. You know, it's like find out what the passion is and live it. When did you realize that you were becoming Tina Turner? <laughs> That's such a good question. I think when I first moved to Los Angeles, I, I, I made a distinct choice to, to live according to my instincts and my intuition, as opposed to living out other people's ideas of what I should do, 
as opposed to living in fear, which would have me, again, becoming perhaps a working consumer or something that I didn't really want to do. I had to sit there and go, what is it that my soul craves? And then I had to find the courage to go out and make it happen. And that's, I think that was just the beginning, the beginning of realizing that, first of all, you have to figure out what life means to you. I think that's where it all starts. You have to sit down and go, what is it that my life means to me? I'm this old, okay, what is it? Am I going to slog away with the mortgage? Am I going to do the cultural itineraries and the timelines that every, or am I going to listen? And we all have that, that voice within that craves something. A lot of people, most people, they kind of squelch that voice because it's not appropriate or it's, it's not. And I thought, no, I can't live my life that way. Life is too precious to live that way. And so these little things, these little inklings, I would say I realized that I was kind of, kind of taking her advice mm -hmm. or just at least sort of internalizing her example, the example that she set. <laughs> what is your fear? Oh, Louisa, you asked some good questions. My fear for the longest time was that I would not live up to my potential. Um, my fear was that I, I somehow I, I just I wouldn't have the guts or the perseverance to, to live up to what I'm supposed to do here on this planet at this time. But I mean, also, I will, will admit that, like every other human being, I have my insecurities. I mean, we get older, we age, we look in the mirror, it's like, oh, God, what's happening? Everything's going south. You know, it's just, again, it's... <laughs> it's Southwest. A, <laughs> one goes west, one goes east. Exactly. But it's, it's, it's like any human being on this planet. We all have the challenge of reconciling our loftier spiritual nature, our ability to be conscious of ourself, with the fact that we are decaying biological beings at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that is quite a challenge. It's quite a challenge to age. It's quite a challenge to age in this culture. And it's quite a challenge as well to love without expectation. And, and these, are, these are the challenges of being human. So why arrows across eons? <laughs> because, uh, like, uh, like I said earlier, it, it's sort of about Tina Turner, but it's also, also about metaphysics and quantum physics and energy. And Tina Turner always, she exemplified a really good use of energy. But we are all, that's what, <laughs> she's, she's a hurricane. She's, she's a tornado a, rolled into one. <laughs> what I loved about her was she didn't, she, she took the energy and she made something amazing happen. And we're all energy. So I thought of myself as a little kid, just kind of flinging arrows across infinity mm -hmm. and eternity. And look at, look what happens. Like I say in the book, I think it's neat to think that the energy that manifested as me, as Catherine, in this current incarnation is kind of thrilled to be Catherine. You know, and it's, it's energy. So you realized at the very end of your book that you were actually becoming Tina Turner in the sense that you weren't a rock star, you weren't wearing her big hair, her red lipstick, and her miniskirt, her high stiletto heels. Right. But it's more of her spiritual influence in you that's right that's absolutely right not literally becoming not Tina literally no. it's figuratively no, it's figuratively yeah what she represents within all of us yes we all have potential and if we invest in ourselves, we all have the ability to manifest that potential and not only for our own betterment for the betterment of humanity and the entire planet that's so when did you realize that you became her I, mean, I think I'm still, uh, I think it's a process. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming is, 
I don't think I have become yet, <laughs> but I am always... You're working on it? I'm working on it. Well, I think we all are. I think we all are. So how many times have you seen her? I have seen her live seven times. Seven times? Seven times oh, over girl, the years. Oh, girl, you're luckier than me. <laughs> seven times over the years, yeah. Did you see her last concert? I did not. No, I didn't. I know, I, me I too. I but I want to get the DVD. Arrows Across Eons Becoming Tina Turner by Katherine Carlson. Don't Thank forget. you, Louisa. Thank you, dear. Thank you.